Good morning again, everyone, and welcome to um, The Gentleman Reviewer. So today I've got another fountain pen that I'm going to review for you guys, and this is a unique one. Um, it's the Faba Castell Grip, um, which was designed, so it was modeled after a pencil that Faba Castell, from what I could find online, they released it in 2001. And so the pencil had studs like this along the body, so as you sharpened it and it got shorter, you'd still have these to grip on it. Um, so it just helped, I mean, grip, I mean, that's the name of it. So it definitely helps with the grip um, on the pencil, on the pencil, because it's right where you would grip it and it's extended along the length of the pencil. So as you sharpen it, it's still there. Um, in 2010, 2011, I couldn't really find an accurate date, um, but it was sometime around there, from what I could gather, that they released it with the um, a pen, a mechanical pencil, and a fountain pen. So unlike a wooden pencil that gets shorter over time, these don't really change, so the grip feature is kind of null, especially on this one, since it's got a rubber grip that I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but it just looks good. I mean, it's unique. I like the way it looks. Some people say it looks a little fishy or a little bit odd, but I definitely like the way it looks and I think it gives it a unique feel. I'm definitely someone that likes fiddling with texture and whatever, um, like the fidget cubes and whatnot. So I definitely liked that. Um, I would just sit there and kind of play with it. So <clears throat> the design itself is somewhat similar to the loom. Um, the clip I noticed from the design or from online and just pictures seems to be a little bit of a smoother contour. Um, and this is triangular, whereas the loom from what I can gather is round. I don't own one and I haven't used one. Um, so I'm just extrapolating from what I found online. So, um, unfortunately for, I mean, this is Faba Castell's introductory line, um, or introductory Mechan or fountain pen. I can't find words this morning. I just reviewed a fountain pen or a mechanical pencil a little before this and can't find words right now. So this is Fava Castell's introductory fountain pen to their line. And they're a good line of fountain pens. Um, and it just kind of, the biggest problem I had with this was it leaked quite a bit of ink. Um, I think you could see when I took it open that there's quite a bit of ink on the nib just already and it's not focusing too well. But I mean, right when I filled it up, there was a glob of ink that came out right there and just dripped onto the page. There's been times I've been at work and I take the cap off and then I find an ink or a glob of ink later on my desk. And so that's been the biggest problem I've had with this pen and is really making me, I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to have to take it out of my lineup because I don't want to get ink on my clothes. I always got ink on my hands. I mean, you can see a little bit right there from yesterday because I open it up and go right with it and let's see. Um, yeah, you can see there's some ink coming up on the grip because it's leaking into the cap. Um, so not much, but you know, it's been, it's definitely been worse and I don't have a lot of ink in this right now, just enough to do this. I mean, I've been using it for about two or three weeks. And so this is just enough ink to finish up, um, with this review, give you guys a writing sample. Um, so to get a little bit more into the pen and some of the things that I did like about it, um, my first impression was I really liked the grip. Um, let's see if I can get a good shot on it for you. Not really. Um, but it's a triangular shape and it's a lot smoother of a shape than the Lamy Safari. Um, so it's very, very just lightly triangular to help you grip it correctly. Um, very smooth contours that looks, I mean, if you're not looking at it, it looks almost round, but you can feel, um, I think it'd be a concave shape right here. Um, I'm terrible with shapes like that, but I think it would be concave. It's going to just help you grip the pen correctly in order that you're getting the right surface area or surface of the nib onto the paper. And just for comparison, here's that Lamy Safari. You can really see the grip outline and it, Lamy Safari is actually one of my favorite fountain pens. I want to get the Lamy All-Star just because I like weightier pens. Um, but that's just for comparison. So moving on, the body of the pen is slightly, you can see this one a little bit better. It's slightly triangular. I mean, you can see where would, where the corners would be. It's not focusing now, of course. 
let's see, I uh, can't really get it to focus. So um, I'll just put it back like this. So it's very, very lightly triangular, a little bit more so than the grip and a little bit more noticeable. Um, and then the cap is round, but oddly that doesn't really clash in terms of design. Um, I think, it, and I think part of that's because this is just a smooth rounded corner triangle. <clears throat> so it just, I mean, it looks good. The, another thing I noticed right off the bat too, is the nib is pretty small. Um, that's not any problem or anything like that. It's just an observation I made. So the smallest nib I had before this was the Pilot Metropolitan, which you can see is a good amount bigger. It looks like a millimeter or two bigger, um, maybe three. So that doesn't really affect rideability or anything like that. Um, it's just, I noticed it was small and I thought it was kind of odd. Let's see if I can get a closer view on the nib for you guys, kind of. So you can see it's an extra fine. You can see all that ink in there. It's got a dotted design across the nib, much like the body of the pen. And um, yeah, so while I'm on the nib, it's made of steel. Let me get that to focus again. There we go. It's made of steel. Um, it's available in extra fine, which is this model here, fine, medium, and broad. One thing I did notice about the nib is it's pretty scratchy, especially on some of the cheaper types of paper. Um, the journal that I use for, which is actually over here, the journal that I use for um, my blog and just personal stuff is 60 GSM paper. And I noticed it was pretty scratchy and gave a lot of feedback on that. Whereas on this journal right here that I'm using as a background, it's an IBAM journal, I-B-A-Y-A-M. And it's got 120 GSM paper in it. This is the only paper I found that it wasn't scratchy on. And I'll do a writing, I'll just do a writing sample on this one now since I've got it for you. Uh, let me go to the back because that's where I tend to write. And you can see I used it there. So while I'm on the nib, I mean, you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see, um, and just for reference, I'm using Thornton's Luxury Brand, or Thornton's Luxury Good Black Fountain Pen Ink, um, which I'll try to get a shot of later, um, but just look it up. So it dries, well, that was kind of while. So let's give it mm, four or five seconds. It dried pretty good um, on this paper, but this is, like I said, this is the only paper I've used where it wasn't really scratchy. You can see though, no feathering. It's a very, um, thick paper, which is going to keep that feathering away. Let's get, since I'm zoomed in and everything, let's get more. So I usually do a, um, I usually like doing some cheap paper just because, you know, like I said, most people don't really have the nice papers always to use. And I'm kind of on a budget, so I can't afford a Rhodia all the time. So... Uh, I don't know if you're not going to be able to hear it, but it just felt a little bit scratchier. This is just business source legal pad um, that I have in my backpack for work. And, you know, it no feathering though, so it works, works well, works well enough. This is the cheapest paper I own that I'm about to get next. This is just some loose leaf paper that I got from Walmart. Let's make sure I'm in frame right there. Super scratchy. You could probably hear that, maybe. It depends on how much background noise I have. Again, though, no feathering, no problems. It's just scratchy and it's got a little bit of feedback. And this is just a composition book I have. You can see that I did my other fountain pen reviews in there too. So this one's just one you can get at Walmart. When school's coming around, you can get it for about 10 or 50 cents. I was just looking at the time and I'm almost at 10 minutes. So I want to get a little bit quicker or a little bit quicker with my videos because watching a video about a fountain pen for 10 minutes isn't always enjoyable. And then lastly, I was going to use my Jarbo dot grid journal. Um, let me get to the back because that's where I tend to do everything just to make it easier. Um, and then I'm not using extra paper. So, really crappy little loopy things, but um, I mean, this one, I don't know if you could hear it on this one or on any of them, but it's just a little bit 
like it's just scratchy you know it's not enjoyable to write with which which sucks I mean but again once you get some of the nicer papers that problem goes away pretty quickly um, so let me zoom back out for you guys so I can get the full pen in <clears throat> and then just so I don't have a wooden background it just looks a little bit nicer and I lost my notes so um, like I said the biggest problem with it has my overall biggest problem with the with this pen and I hope it's just a quality control issue is how leaky it is um, like I said, it's just something that I don't want to get ink on my clothes. I don't want to get ink on what I own. I've had it drop on some of my journals and, you know, and then you have an ink glob on your journal that obviously goes through the next side. And it's just, it's something that I'm going to take out of my line. What I'm going to do after I do this video is I'm going to clean it, <clears throat> let it dry, put it back together. It looks like I'd be able to take the nib and the feet out. I'm going to clean that really good and then put it all back together. And I really hope that that's going to... Um, take that problem away. I might also need to use a drier ink. Um, from what I found, the Thornton's Luxury Good ink is fairly wet. And maybe, so maybe that's the problem. And just for some last little bits of uh, specifications, just give a full review. Closed, this pen is 139 millimeters or about five and a half inches. Another thing that I didn't particularly like about it was, and this is just, um, personal preference is how big it is posted. When you post it, that 139 millimeters jumps to 174 and goes from five and a half inches to nearly seven. I think it was about six and seven eighth inches. Um, it's not top heavy though, because the pen as a whole only weighs 15 grams because it's a plastic body. The only metal on this is the clip and the nib. <clears throat> and then I think the converter has um, a metal ink thing in it or I can't remember nope it doesn't um, so it's just got a metal thing on the converter but so another side note mine did not come with a converter from what I can gather most of them do so I, I bought I got mine as a gift so I don't know if that's why that is not focusing there we go um, so again that's just I mean with a it's got a pretty pretty center of balance to see if I can do that for you guys I'm not gonna be able to get the whole pen in frame just because of how long it is um, but the center of balance goes up pretty high when you post it um, which isn't a problem for such a light pen there we go right there without it let's see if I can get it balanced for you guys without it it's about it's about center on both of them um, which for a small pen isn't that big of a problem and it's light so you're not gonna be fighting fighting the momentum while you're writing like you would with a metal capped pen or uh, I can't think of the right word lacquer pen where the top is really heavy um, and lastly it's just a stainless steel clip this is one that ooh, there's ink right there I'm gonna have to clean that later um, the clip is sturdy on this it's got a lip on there which makes it really easy to get in like a pen loop over some paper in a pocket I wouldn't carry this one in a pocket because it leaks so bad but that's a side note. So again, overall, I really wanted to like this pen. I really wanted to, I mean, it's an introductory model into a really nice line of pens. And I really wanted to like it because, you know, I want to get more Faber-Castell pens. I've got, um, I think I have some mechanical pencils that I have. I just have to double check. Um, no, I'm thinking of my Stettler. I don't think I have a Faber-Castell. Um, the German words sometimes screw me up. Um, but you know, I, I really wanted to like it. The, the ink was the biggest thing that I couldn't get over. So comment below if you've used this before and have had a different experience than me. I will do an update. Um, I don't know if I'll add to the video or what, but I'll at least put it in the box below, the info box below, what cleaning it did. Um, and I'll add to my blog post as well, just so um, you guys can see the update. So look there. It, it won't. It'll be a little while before I get to doing that. Probably a month, I would guess. So if it's within, it might even take longer. Let's be honest. Um, but if it's within a couple months, then I might not have the update in there. So comment below if you've used this before and what you think about it. And as always, please follow me on my other channels and subscribe to this channel if you like what I'm doing. Thanks again, guys.